All right, you guys, good evening. I know it's pretty dark out here right now, so I'm gonna hurry, get, get the TIG rigs out of the trailer. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about TIG rigs. We're gonna be talking about what the heck is a TIG rig, um, some of the parts you need to be able to connect them to your machines, and then uh, some of the different kind of TIG rigs that I run and that I've found that I really enjoy, and others that I don't, and vice versa, and things like that. So some of the positives, some of the negatives, and then we're gonna be talking about different gauges and, uh, and going from there. We're gonna try to help you guys get set up as best as I can to run some TIG. So let me grab this TIG rig out of this trailer really fast, and we'll see you in just a sec. Let's go to the shop where we can actually see. get a little bit of heat going for a second while I organize all this stuff, get it all separated so that uh, it's a little bit easier to show you guys what I'm talking about and give you a better idea on what is happening. So, we're going to get this stuff organized. Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of Schofield Welding. Guys, we're super happy to have you here with us. And one of the reasons I am building this video is I really wanted to try to reach out and try to help anybody that's super new to TIG welding or that isn't quite sure what they need to get to be able to hook up to a machine or to hook up to like a shop machine or whatever. Right, so when I was first starting out, I remember getting on a chat. I kept getting this word thrown in, the word TIG rig, you need to get a TIG rig, this is a TIG rig, TIG rig, TIG rig, TIG rig. And so I got on a chat form, and uh, I was trying to figure out what the heck TIG rig was so I could buy one. And I remember I was pretty young, I think I was maybe 20, and uh, I got on there and I said, uh, hey guys, trying to figure out what a TIG rig is and trying to buy one, what exactly is that? And buddy, I got chewed up and spit out. Never did figure out what a TIG rig was off of that chat form. I got told that uh, if you don't know what a TIG rig is, you have no business being a welder and blah, blah, blah. Well, I was super new and I had no idea about any of it. So anyways, that's what this video is for. And I'm going to try to help you guys figure out what a TIG rig is. Some of the TIG rigs that I use that I really, really like. And uh, some of the... You know, the downfalls to a flex head, to a stiff head, to a heavy hitter, to a Miller Weldcraft, and all sorts of different ones. So, I've actually got one, two, three, four different TIG rigs sitting here. I got some purge hoses sitting here, and I'm going to explain to you exactly what the heck a TIG rig is. So, I hope you guys stay tuned, be blessed, and we'll talk to you here in just a sec. The TIG rig. Let's talk about it. What a TIG rig is. The breakdown of a TIG rig. My heavy hitter. This is what you are going to wind up getting when you get when you order a TIG torch. You're going to get a torch. Uh, you're going to look for a V, as in valve for the head. Now, I had to ask Eli what the heck a V was when it when it showed up because I wasn't sure what it is. V stands for valve in the head. So when you order one, I always get one in the head. Um, that way you can just control it easy with your thumb, turn it on, turn it off. You're ready to rock and roll. Now you're going to get a tungsten. Uh, Hold, it's not a holder, it's a tightener basically is what it is. Um, they make a long one, which this is a long one. They make a medium one. This one is a medium one. It's got uh, comparable to the head sizes. Okay, this one's medium and this one is the long and then they make a short button nose, which is basically what the end of this cap is. It's about as big as that one is, all right? Now, when you order your TIG rig, um, there's different amps. This is a 250 amp TIG rig from Heavy Hitter. Super nice TIG rig. They make 150 amp, which is the one I'll be buying next time because I don't weld anything big enough for a 250 amp torch right now. Uh, maybe when we start getting into the aluminum or, or whatever, we'll probably wind up just getting a, uh, a water cool. 250 amp or a 150 amp. Um, I All of my TIG rigs, except for my heavy hitter, is a 150 amp TIG rig. So, a little bit about the connection system on these things. Okay guys, the other thing I'm gonna have in this video is I will have links down at the bottom to all of these freaking TIG rigs. Uh, I'll try to find the purge hose, if I can find the purge hose, to the gauge that I'm gonna talk to you about, to the Y splitters, to all of it. 
just to try to make it as easy as I can for you. I will try to find the best price I can find for them, and, uh, and then it's up to you to make the decision on what kind of TIG rig you want to run and, and whatever, you know. So what we got is we're going to be talking about two different connection systems. Now we have a block system, which this is a block. Now what's going to happen is you're going to run a purge hose, which is going to tie into this end of this block, and then it'll tie into your gauge. Now your ground from your machine, when you, when you run a block, you're usually running off of your machine, which is an engine drive machine. Your ground is going to hook here. When you normally are welding sticks, so if you're welding a 200 or whatever, the negative is going to run to this, and your positive is going to be your ground. So, um, so like I said, ground hooks to your hooks to your TIG rig. The stinger is going to hook to your ground piece. Now, that's one of the reasons I really like running a T300 um, on my Pipe Pro is because they are so versatile that way. You can just hook them in, or you can use them as grounds or whatever. Now, personally for myself, a T300 is the best ground you can buy. They arc off on everything, they freaking make a connection, and they hold a really good connection. I love a T300, so I'll have one link down at the bottom for your grounds. Um, a lot of people are going to look at you, especially in the structural world, and they're going to be like, what the heck are you doing? Well, you just don't understand. That thing will arc off through flipping paint. Like, it just, I don't know how it does it, but it freaking does it. Um, but anyway, so you have a block. This is going to be hooked to a to a purge hose, and and then you're going to have your connection right here. Now it's got a it's got a copper line that runs through your TIG, through your liner, and uh, and that's what's going to be making your connection to your tungsten. Now, as far as your heavy hitters go, and a few different other ones, they give you a quick connect. Now, I don't mind the quick connect, but I don't love the quick connect. I would much rather have a block because. Um, I don't want to run quick connects on my on my leads. Basically, that's really what it boils down to. Now, I do run quick connects on my stinger side because every now and then I'll run a suitcase, like a wire feed suitcase, my Miller 12VS Extremes. I got two of them in the trailer. Just in case we have to run some wire on a job, I got the ability to just hook into it and ready to rock and roll. Now, I can swap my leads on my machine if I need to and, and hook into it that way, but like I said, I prefer the block. But I believe the reason this one has a quick connect is one of the big, big advantages of a heavy hitter, of a heavy hitter TIG rig, is this big cable. Okay, this is straight, this is like lead cable. This is what you'd make your whip out of for, uh, for your stinger. Huge advantage. Now you're talking about a pinky sized chunk of a, a copper here instead of, you know, a pencil lead piece of copper. This thing is going to take so much more heat, be so much more conductive, and, and give you a, probably a smoother arc. Now see, I'm still learning the TIG rig side of stuff, the TIG welding side of stuff, so as long as the thing's welding and it's not leaving a bunch of porosity, I'm good, you know? So, but for somebody that, that is, does it more consistent and is really good at it, they would probably notice the difference with this bigger chunk of copper than with the pencil piece of copper, which is, which is this. Now there's nothing wrong with this. This is what I run 99% of the time. And there's reasons for it, and I'll tell you about it down the road. But with this connection, you hook into your leads, and then with this valve right here, this is what hooks into your purge hose, which hooks into your gauge. So that is how you connect this to a machine. Now the other thing you could do, which would be super freaking handy, if you have the ability to run a separate hose off of a machine, like a, like a shop machine, then you could swap out this little, uh, this quick connect, which would give you the ability to plug right into a shop machine, which then would give you a heavy hitter, which would be flipping dope. So anyways, these, these TIG rigs are freaking awesome. They're a damn good TIG rig. Um, there's nothing wrong with these TIG rigs. I just really don't like running quick connects on my leads. But if you run quick connects, this is a really nice, really nice tip rig. So now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna to talk to you about your flex heads and your solid heads. Okay guys, welcome back. Hope you can see this good enough. Now what I got here, I have two flex heads, which are the two red heads. Um, I believe you can order red heads in a solid head if you want. And then I have just a straight solid head, meaning that this does not flex. Now, one of the things when I was learning how to weld, 
and learning how to TIG weld, especially, is I was really bearing down on that cup. Now, it's not good. It's, um, eventually you learn how to be light-handed and you learn how to, how to control that freaking pressure, but when you are learning, eventually this head starts to get hot just from being next to the weld or whatever, and as you bear down on it, that head's wanting to come back. One of the big disadvantages of a flex head, especially when you're learning, is, is that. Now, the big advantage of a flex head is if you're going to walk in like a freehand bead, you can move this thing wherever you want to get up underneath that and then just walk that bead in and it's super comfortable. Now, you can get these flex heads about anywhere. Now, as far as like a structural TIG welder, I would recommend a flex head. I think they are awesome. You can reach into places. You can do all sorts of stuff with a flex head that would be very difficult to do with just a solid head. Now, both the heavy hitter and the Miller torches both have flex heads. So, all you gotta look for when you order one is flex head and, and that's what it's talking about. Is this thing will move in all sorts of directions whatever you need, right? So, that is that. Now, one of the advantages of a solid head, which I prefer, now that I've welded uh, quite a bit of stainless, we put in like three miles of four inch stainless. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the videos. If you haven't, go back on some of those videos. We put in a bunch of four inch stainless. I prefer a solid head. Um, over a flex head. Now, the guy that was teaching me, and who is just an absolute stud, Carl, him and his boy, Colder, super awesome people, uh, helped me out a bunch, because I really didn't know what I was doing. One of the things I noticed is Carl used a solid head. Now, he didn't tell me he used a solid head, I just happened to be moving some pipe out of his hooch and trying to help him, and I noticed that that torch was a solid head. So I decided to go get one. Now, when I was first using it, super pain in the butt, man. You had to get way up underneath there and then start working it. But once you figured out how to use this solid head, I prefer it over a flex head for pipe. Now, for pipe, it's pretty simple. You're going from bottom to top. Uh, nothing really changes. And so I'm not trying to get into anything. And, and maybe if I was doing tie-ins, I would switch back over to a flex head to where I could reach up under there and freehand a bead in a lot easier. With like this, I'd have to reach up with the, with the cup and try to freehand it in where instead with a flex head, I could bend this head back, just put a finger up there and, and walk it in and stay away from the weld as much as I can because it's gonna get hot up there. So that's one of the advantages. I really do enjoy a solid head for pipe Probably for tie-ins and structural, I would definitely go to a flex head. Now, we're gonna be talking about cups, so stay tuned, I'll bring you back for some cups. One of the things that I learned on that four inch stainless, and like I said, thank goodness for Carl and his boy, Colder, super awesome. One of the things Carl did, and it was right when he was getting to know me, so he was, so he was pretty quiet about helping me at first, but one of the things he told me, he says, you don't need all those other cups. Get you a number 12 cup and, and just run with that. He uses a number 12 cup for almost everything. Now, granted, when you get into like the small sanitary stuff and things like that, you'll probably go down to a smaller cup. But I've welded everything from two inch to freaking 12 inch so far with just a number 12 cup. I put the bead in with a number 12 cup, I hot pass, I fill, I cap with a number 12 cup. Uh, it was actually a super life changer for me because I wasn't slipping all over the place, I could control it easier. It was just a so much bigger advantage just using the number 12 cup. Now it does take some getting used to, just like anything, you're gonna have to get used to it. So a number 12 cup is what I recommend for probably most of everything you're gonna be doing. Uh, they're just easy to use, they're super controllable, and once you really figure out how to use one, I think you'll like it a lot. So I love a number 12 cup, you can do whatever you want, but I'll have these links. Now, most of everything I'm gonna weld with is an eighth inch tungsten, 2% thoriated. Uh, I've, I've used the purple tungsten. I don't love the purple tungsten. The purple tungsten, man, if you touch it in any way or something goes haywire, the end of that tungsten tends to kinda like fray. Uh, it's almost like a fray, it's really weird. I'm not quite sure how else to explain it, except that at the end of it, it kinda like, it frays out. 
And so, not really my favorite thing to use. I felt like I used way more purple tungsten than I did 2% thoriated, which is the red tungsten, uh, for stainless or carbon. And uh, so anyways, I always use an eighth inch tungsten. I prefer eighth inch tungsten. It seems to just do everything I need it to do. So just something to think about when you're buying tungsten. Okay, we're gonna be talking gauges. This gauge, let me see, let me make sure. It's an inner gas gauge. Super nice gauge. I believe this thing cost me about 600 bucks, maybe $700. I'm gonna to try to find it cheaper if I can online for you guys. So I'm gonna to try to find this cheaper for you guys online if I can. Uh, when, when it comes to gauges, you buy quality. So that's what you're buying. You are buying a piece of machine hardware that is either gonna last you a long time or it's not. Now, there are the flow gauges, which I've known I got a flow gauge. Okay, so there's two different kinds of gauges. Either gauge is gonna work fine, but there are some disadvantages that I have found with the gauges. Um, when it comes to color on stainless, one of the things I found on stainless is coverage. You gotta have plenty of argon running through the torch. You gotta have plenty of uh, push through the torch, but at the same time, you gotta have enough push running through your inner um, through your purge, which is going to keep that, that bead on stainless from sugar. And so one of the advantages I've found, and when you buy this gauge, it's gonna make you absolutely sick. But right here in this connection, where your Y splitter comes in, I took this off and I took a drill bit, not, not a big drill bit, but a drill bit, and I drilled through it. And you don't have to punch all the way through it, you just gotta drill the hole. There's a little piece of, um, it's almost like stone in there um, that you drill out and then you can put all this back together you get your Y splitter put on there and it allows enough gas to push through this that you can have enough gas going to your torch and enough gas going into your perch so that's 100% up to you if you want to do it or not uh, that is one of the ways I figured out how to put a lot of color into a piece of stainless and to keep the color in stainless and not cook it out. Now, um, I prefer to have color over black. Now, <laughs> anyways, so there's a little stone piece right in here. It's gonna be the same piece that's gonna be in here and you're just gonna punch through it and you're done. So, I believe it's actually in this fitting. But just something, I mean, you do it if you want. You don't have to, definitely if you're learning, um, you definitely don't have to do that. <clears throat> One of the things I found out about the flow gauge, which I did not love, I bought the flow gauge because Carl had a flow gauge. I don't know how he had his set up, but he was getting a ton of color and he was just mostly probably because Carl's just a badass and he's just good at what he does. And, uh, and then he had his boy and me who were just freaking green, green, green as grass. And, uh, we were just trying to be like him. But anyways, one of the disadvantages I found with the flow gauge is it cannot keep up with a torch and a perch. Um, <coughs> it tends to rob one from the other and uh, you'll either have very low gas at the torch or you'll have very low gas in the perch. So I don't really love a flow gauge. Now a lot of guys get away with a flow gauge. They love a flow gauge. They do really good with a flow gauge. I don't know how they have this thing set up because I was never able to get the flow gauge to actually do what I wanted it to do. So, um, so I took the inner gas Victor gauge, which I will try to find the link for down at the bottom. Like I said, they're pretty high dollar, but this thing is, I mean, it's a nice flipping gauge. And it's just, it's interchangeable between uh, 75, 25. I'm trying, sorry, my eyes are probably looking off over here because I'm watching the screen to make sure that everything is focusing. But, uh, Anyways, this gauge is interchangeable between 75-25 argon and, and a couple other gases. Um, the reason I keep this in the trailer is because if we're going to run the, the suitcases or whatever, all I got to do is just pull this off, undo the purge hose off the TIG rig, plug it into the suit, suitcase, and we're ready to rock and roll. So, anyways, I recommend this gauge. Um, you don't have to drill it out. I did, and it allowed for a lot more coverage. It was able to keep up with the purge and give me enough gas at the torch that everything went really well, so. <coughs> okay. Let's talk purge hoses. 
This is a purge hose. Now, all, I don't know how you order purge hose. I guess all I did is I walked in and said, hey, I need some green purge hose. And they're like, okay. And they said, how big? And they said, 100 feet. And so they made it up, crimped the ends on it for me, and we were good to go. Now, <coughs> I do recommend, see, you can get two different kinds of Y splitters. Now, I got male ends on both sides of this torch, or on this perch hose, because it's going to take a male end to go into your gauge, which is going to go into your Y splitter. Let me get this kind of split up really quick. I gotta pull this back out and make sure this is recording like I want it to. Okay, so I got male ends on both sides of this purge hose. Um, I do get 100 feet. Now you can get little connectors that have female ends on both sides that if you do have to run more purge hose, all you gotta do is hook in that little piece and you can extend your purge hose. <coughs> um, basically this is gonna go in one side of your gauge. Okay, and then the other side, Now this is the heavy hitter setup. The other side is gonna go into this valve set right here, right? So that's where that's gonna go. You'll be able to turn it on right here and then turn it on up at your torch. I do prefer having a valve on your torch. That's what the V is on your lettering. So uh, when, when you look at all the torches I'm gonna to leak at the bottom are gonna have a valve on the head. Um, as far as the millers go, you're gonna have your block. This is your block. And this is going to hook in to your block. Okay, so you got your block, your stinger's going to hook on right here. This thing's going to be live. You're going to be getting gas through your hose and to your torch head through that. Now, the next thing you got to have. Okay, guys, so the next thing we got to talk about is your purge hose. Now, this is just the same stuff. Um, I do need to cut this one off because I guess in this one was probably an extension for something. I had to be old, I don't remember. But I need to cut this off, put another female end or a male end on this side so that it'll go into the Y splitter on my gauge. So you're gonna have two hoses coming off of your gauge. You're gonna have one that runs to your torch and one that runs to a perch. Now on the end of your perch hose, and this is another trick I picked up from watching Carl. He's, like I said guys, he's freaking good at what he does. Get, you, get the end of your purge hose, and this is what's gonna be inside the pipe. This is where your weld is gonna be sitting like right here, and this is gonna be pumping argon and covering the inside of the weld. It's your cover gas. It's what's pushing out. Once you build your dams in each side of this piece of pipe, this is what's pushing out all the oxygen. Now, this is a small piece of stainless wool, or uh, steel wool. I usually have a chunk on here about this big that's all taped on here. Now what it does is it actually diffuses the argon, which means it's pushing it out and it's making it spread out. Instead, if you don't have that, it's just shooting straight out and, and it's not really covering anything. So if you put steel wool on the end of this thing, tape it up, it's gonna help push out that argon and cover the inside of that stainless really good. That sucker will be shiny, shiny. So anyways, guys, that's kind of a TIG rig setup. It's pretty simple. Um, you, you're going to have your torch, you're going to have a block or a quick connect, depending on what kind of torch you run. Like I said, the heavy hitters are a beautiful torch, they're awesome. The millers are a beautiful torch, they're awesome, they both have their place. Um, one thing about the heavy hitter compared to the miller is the miller has more flex because it's, it's only a single hose. The heavy hitter is a little stiffer, but the heavy hitter is going to take more heat where the miller won't take that much heat. Now you can buy different size millers and different size uh, heavy hitters to, can, to kind of control that heat. So depending on what you're welding on, if you're welding on some like 42 inch that's going to take a lot of flipping heat, I would bump up to like a 250 amp rig or I think they even make a bigger rig than that. So that's what's going to take your heat. If you're welding little stuff like 4 inch or 6 inch or something like that, the 150s are going to do everything you want. Um, I don't think I ever got above 120 amps, 130, maybe 140 amps. I don't really remember. It was a little bit ago. But anyways, so you got your TIG rig, you got your block or your quick connect. Then you have your uh, hose, which is going to hook into either the valve system on the heavy hitters or the block system on the millers. And 
then it's going to run to your Y splitter, which is then going to be connected to a gauge, which is going to be connected to your argon bottle. Off of the other side of the Y splitter, you're going to have your purge hose. Guys, that's what makes up a TIG rig. Now, I hope that that explained enough of it for you. If you guys have any questions, just leave me a comment in the bottom. I will get to them as quick as I can. I am going to put the links down at the bottom just to try to help you guys find your TIG rigs and uh, hopefully, you know, give you a little bit of a head start. Now, I do remember the first time I bought a TIG rig, had no idea what I was buying. I was just super stoked to have one. And, uh, and yeah, so anyways, I had to go in and ask the, uh, the um, weld supply what the heck a TIG rig was. And they, they were at least kind enough to help me out. So... Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that video. We love you all. Be blessed. Hopefully, this is helping some people. And uh, if it helped you, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with some buddies, help some other guys out, and uh, hopefully it took care of everybody.